Uh, first things first, uh, Desmos uh, is a tool that we use online for graphing. We may switch it up and use a different tool a little bit later. I highly recommend that you um, create an account using your school Google account. That way you can save different graphs um, for later usage. So notice that I have a lot of different versions of graphs here saved. Uh, it, it just makes your life easier if you ever mess up on a graph or need to edit it or tweak it. You don't have to redo the entire graph. So again, highly recommend that you save your graphs um, as you go, but uh, that is up to you. So things that are going to be required when you're graphing, you're going to need to put in axes labels. We can see those here, and we can see some instructions um, about changing the axes labels. You're also going to need to add a title. Later on, we'll move that title up here into the middle section. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started by reading these directions up here. So it says, insert your data below, and then click on the wrench icon to change the axes labels. Now, if you have your data in a spreadsheet like this one, uh, you can actually just copy and paste your data over. Um, so I can do that right here and just say copy and paste. It may do it as a new data set and you can delete your uh, previous one or the, the template one in there. Um, or if you want, you can manually enter your data in. So for example, if I wanted to, I could manually say 3.7, uh, 4.0, 4.7, 5.0, 6.0, 7.0, 8.0, 9.0, 10.0, 11.0, 12.0, 13.0, 14.0, 15.0, 16.0, 17.0, 18.0, 19.0, 20.0, 21.0, 22.0, 23.0, 24.0, 25.0, 26.0, 27.0, 28.0, 29.0, 5.1, these are all in centimeters, uh, 5.6 and 6.2. So now that I've got my data in, uh, we've got it graphed here. I'm going to delete that extra data set. So we just have the first one. And then the next thing that it says to do is I'm going to click on the wrench icon um, to change the axis labels. So to do that, I go over here to the graph settings. I click on that wrench icon. And I'm going to go down here to the uh, axis labels, uh, where it says add x-axis label. So my x-axis, this was mass added. So I'm going to say mass added. And then I do a slash. And then I need to include the units. In this case, the units were in grams, so I'll put a G. Then I'm going to go to my y-axis, and I'm going to say that one is length of spring. I can actually just say spring length is fine. And that one is in, ooh, there we go, and that one is in centimeters. So I'll put a slash and then centimeters for my units. Cool. Once I'm done with that, I can click on the gear icon or wrench icon to close that out. Um, and now we can see up here, spring length in centimeters and mass added in grams are on our axes. The next thing, it says add a title by changing the zero, zero points um, below to something near the top of your graph and adding a label to it. Pro tip, uncheck the color and the dot will also disappear, so it's just a label. So what that means here is this zero, zero label. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a title for my experiment. It needs to be long and detailed, so it will be something like uh, length of, keep typing length wrong, length of spring versus mass added for a uh, hanging spring. Cool. Not my most beautiful title, but it works. And then the next thing I need to do is I want to go ahead and move this title to someplace where a title would be. So if I look at my graph right here, um, at this point, this is 5, 10, and 15 right here. Um, and if I go up to maybe about 8 or maybe even 7, that would be a good spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this point from 0, 0 to 15 and 7. And we'll notice that my um, title moves kind of up towards that area. The next thing that I do is if I uncheck this color right here, then it gets rid of the dot and I just have a title. Now that's actually a little bit low to me, so I'm going to go ahead and make that up at uh, 8 instead. Cool, and we see it pop up. So that's how you add a title onto your graph, so that way it's embedded in it and we don't lose it. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is we want to fit these trend lines to our data. Now, in this class, we're going to often give you multiple trend line options because um, we want to see what pattern or relationship fits our data. Uh, and we get to test them out and see. 
So in this case, we've got two. We've got one that looks kind of curved. That's probably this quadratic one right here. And we've got one that looks like a straight line, kind of linear, and that's y equals mx plus b, or ax plus b. To adjust them, you just simply take the slider right here, and you see if you can fit your data with one. So if I look at this, I can see that curve one really isn't going to fit. So I'm actually going to turn that one off so I can just focus on the linear one. And if I see that I, if I'm doing this linear one, this is just adjusting the slope, but it also has a B or a Y intercept. And I can adjust that with this slider bar. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my two slider bars until I find a trend line that fits. So in this case, uh, one that goes through most, if not all, of my data points it's probably something kind of like this. So you're wanting to balance out not being too far from any single data point kind of going through the middle um, area of all of them, not necessarily the middle of the dot, but just kind of in between um, all the data points as much as possible. So looking at this, it looks like my trend line for this um, graph is going to be y equals uh, and here I can even write that in as a note real fast. Uh, so it looks like my trend line for this graph is going to be something like y equals a, which is 0.1x, um, plus b. So that might be something you start off by writing originally. Let me put this as a note. So y equals uh, a, which was 0 0.1 uh, times x plus b. Oh, sorry, not plus b, plus b. 3.6. So that might be the equation I start off with, but remember that when we're actually writing this into our lab report later, and I'm just writing a note right now, you'll actually write this on your lab report document. Um, when I'm actually writing this into a lab report, remember that I don't want to use y and x, I want to use whatever my actual variables were. So in this case, it was spring length. So what I might be doing is something like when I write this in using L for length, since that's what it was, and saying 0 0.1 times, and then mass added, maybe I'll use an M, and then say plus 3.6. So that way I'm using my actual variables and looking at what the relationship is there. Alternatively, you could be using the actual full word, so you could say something like length, um, and I often put them in parentheses just to make it a little bit cleaner and easier to see. Um, but length equals mass uh, times 0.1 plus 3.6. That also works too for writing your equation. Now the last step that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to export our graph. To export, what you're going to do is go here to our little share graph icon. Uh, you're going to go to export image. And then to make this easier to read, it's often easiest if we choose medium lines or medium thickness. Um, it looks like my title is going off a little bit, so maybe I'll go back to thin um, in this case. It also looks like my title is kind of running into that, so let me go ahead and get back out of here real fast. I'm going to adjust this down. Uh, or maybe I'll just zoom out a little bit. Nope, too far. Um, so if I adjust this down, we'll say back at seven. Hopefully that doesn't run over my graph again. Um, again, if this is just for a daily kind of class activity, um, it's okay if it doesn't look perfect. Yeah, it doesn't really look like I'm gonna be able to get that in there very well. So maybe we'll try a medium rectangle. Um, eh, square is fine. Uh, so we'll just do medium square. Um, it looks like my title is going to run over um, that information right there. That's okay if this isn't a formal lab report, if this is just one of our regular kind of daily class things. Um, as long as I can see that you mostly have everything in there, that's what I'm really concerned about for right now. Um, so I'll leave it at thin. I'll download the, uh, the image. We can see kind of that little bit of it uh, popping up right here, cut off by my recording. Um, but you would then upload that image into your document or wherever you need to report. All right, that's it for Desmos graphing for this one. We'll have a more streamlined walkthrough later on, um, teaching you to kind of uh, create a lot of this on your own from your very own template, not needing one that is um, created for you.